In this video, we're gonna talk about radiator expansion tanks. All right, so first of all, I'll just go over some of the basics um, to do with radiators, just in case you're not familiar with um, how they actually work. So in most cars, you'll have a cooling system if it's a water-cooled engine. Um, here's a radiator out of a Mini, just to demonstrate. Um, what actually happens is you'll have coolant that gets circulated in the engine, um, usually by the water pump. So the water pump will circulate the coolant. Um, it'll come out of the top of the engine, which is usually where the cylinder head is. That hot coolant goes into the top of the radiator here. Then within the radiator, there are several cores. So a core is just like a, a, a tube which runs from the top to the bottom. So there are, there are multiple ones running all the way along. And what happens is as the coolant runs down those individual cores, um, the mesh on the surrounding cores absorbs the heat. The fan would normally be here. Um, and then in the case of a mini, or a moak, it pushes air through the radiator rather than pulling it through like a conventional car would. So when the air flows through this section here, so there's um, gaps all the way along it, um, that will cool the coolant that's inside the radiator. Then this opening down the bottom here, that leads back up to the water pump. And then from the water pump, it gets pumped through the block of the engine. Now, in a um, Mini or a Moke, what you would normally do, depending on how you've got it set up, um, this radiator, you generally do not completely fill it up right up to the top. So a modern day car, you may do that. Um, and you'll notice that this hose here is connected from the top of where the, where the radiator cap goes. Um, that leads just down to the ground. So when liquids heat up, so particularly engine coolant, that liquid will expand, takes up more space, um, and then any excess liquid comes out of this tube here and runs down the bottom. Um, it will only eject coolant if the, if the cooling system gets to a certain pressure. So in the case of minis and mokes, it's usually around 13 or 15 PSI in some cases. Um, some of the earlier minis, their radiator caps work um, to release pressure at 7 psi, so it depends on the setup. Okay, so let's um, talk about radiator caps. So I'll just briefly explain how they actually work. So on this particular radiator cap, you'll notice that there's a rubber section at the top here. Now, this one's a bit old and worn out. So there's a piece of rubber at the top here. It has a spring on here as well. So what actually happens is normally that rubber seal comes in contact with the bottom of this, or this section here where the actual cap sits into and then it seals the um, radiator so um, no liquid is going to come out into this overflow until it gets to the point where the pressure builds up it pushes up on that spring and then it allows coolant to escape the system um, there's a few different types of caps as well um, I'll, I'll just quickly um, talk about this too. Um, these ones are about 59 millimetres. Um, on my classic Mini, it has a smaller cap, which is about 45, 44 millimetres. So, so this is the, the larger size cap. Um, the other thing as well is the actual height too. So um, some of them have a longer neck than others. So this actual neck is three centimetres. So you'll notice that the height of that one is a lot taller than this one here. So that's this is a long neck radiator. Um, this is a for a short neck. Okay, um, let's talk about expansion tanks and sort of how they work. So what happens is in the normal situation, this um, radiator, you generally don't fill that, it up with coolant all the way to the top. So I don't know how well you can see it, but inside this one here, there's a little metal bar that says um, fill to this line. So that way there's always gonna be a section of air at the top of the radiator here to allow for the expansion because when it expands, it's gonna take up the space and then you don't wanna lose coolant. This is only just to eject any excess if it's been topped up. Um, but there will always be 
less capacity in there because of that space that the air takes up. So that's the advantage of using an expansion tank. Um, the expansion tank holds that extra fluid so it can be brought back into the main system um, when needed. So there's a few things that need to be done differently. All right, so first of all, on the actual um, radiator itself, um, you, instead of having a regular radiator cap, which has the um, valve on, what actually gets fitted is one of these, and it's like a, um, a blanking cap. Um, so you'll notice on the back of it, all it has is just a, a rubber seal. So what the purpose of that, that cap, pretty much just allows coolant to freely flow from here into the expansion tank. Um, you'll notice mo most modern day cars don't actually have a cap on the radiator and they work up, wait, work in this similar way where the expansion tank cap is the main point to fill up your radiator. So let's just imagine that hose is connected to here. Um, the blanking cap goes on here and then the expansion tank is what actually has the pressure relief cap. So that would go onto there. Um, imagine that this hose here is connected to the actual radiator here. Um, what happens is once that fluid, um, the pressure builds up, so the pressure in this tank will be the same as the pressure in the radiator system. Um, this point here, it will eject coolant onto the road um, if it needs to, if there's excess coolant to get rid of. So the advantage of using this, um, it adds extra coolant into the system and it um, ensures that this part of the radiator is fully filled up with fluid all of the time. Okay, so let's have a look how we've got this set up. So at the moment, this has got a 15 PSI cap on it. Um, that's connected to the expansion tank and this expansion tank has a 13 PSI cap on it. So the way that this is set up, this actually acts as a recovery tank, not an expansion tank. So if this main radiator ejects any coolant, the coolant runs into here, um, and then it can be recovered once the engine, or the coolant cools down, pressure drops, and then it sucks coolant back in. Um, at, inside this actual expansion tank, that point here, leads to a hose inside, of a pipe that's inside that goes down to the bottom. So it draws up the fluid from the bottom of the tank back in. So that's how that actually works. So what we need to do in this system is take off this radiator cap and we need to replace that with a blanking cap. But um, what I'll do first is um, top up the coolant because we don't want any um, coolant, any air in this section here. So this cap will allow coolant to flow directly into this overflow. Um, at this point here, it's going to have air in it, but we allow this whole top section of the radiator to be completely filled with coolant all of the time. All right, so let's open up this. And we'll place that blanking cap on. So you can see the difference. This It's just a rubber seal at the top, and that's all. Um, we'll top up that coolant. So in theory, you can go all the way up to there because the actual rubber seal sits on this outer edge here. But when we do the tests, we'll um, see what actually will happen. Um, I've also um, recorded temperatures. Um, temperature in here and the actual overall operating temperature too. Um, the temperature of the head won't change. Um, the coolant isn't going to make that run cooler. Okay. Um, and then on over here, I'm going to leave the 13 PSI, or should I change it? Yeah, I'm going to just leave that as the 13 PSI cap. Um, but what I will do in here, I'll just check the level. So this tank, generally you don't want to fill it um, all the way to the top. 
maybe a bit over halfway. So I'll add a small amount more coolant in there. And if there is too much, it will eject it. So most modern day cars, as I mentioned already, don't have a radiator cap. And then you check the level of your coolant from the expansion tank. So that's um, how this system is actually going to work now. So that cap doesn't come off and you check your coolant from here. Um, of course, you can still take it off and just check what the level is like. All right, so what I want to do now is just um, start up the engine because it's cold at the moment, let it run up to temperature, um, just to first of all make sure there's no leaks. Um, and then the next thing to do would be to test it. Um, generally, the conditions are obviously driving up steep hills or um, sitting idling in traffic they're the two conditions when the engine sort of the temperature gauge rises a bit more but we'll um, get it up to temperature and just see what happens all right so what i've got here i've got one of these um temperature guns and i just want to just see what the temperature is um in the actual um, radiator that way we'll sort of know if we're getting up to um temperature Okay, so I've got it up to temperature now. So where the gauge is sitting now, that temperature gauge, that's pretty much um, its normal position. It will go a little bit higher um, if, we, if it's under load, a lot of load going uphill. Um, so temperature gauge is still the same. Um, checking the temperature on here, so that's at 70 degrees. Um, the actual expansion pipe, this does feel warmer, but then of course any excess coolant that drops into there, this still feels cold. Um, it's not gonna get much hotter because that coolant um, is just being stored in there. It's not circulating back in the system at the moment. So um, the system seems to be holding pressure. It doesn't look like anything's come out of that overflow. Um, I haven't noticed any green coolant on the floor. So what I'll do in a second is switch it off and then just see what happens. Um, if there are issues, it will eject some coolant straight away. It's a shame it's raining, otherwise I could take it for a test drive. So let's switch it off and then just um, let it sit for a bit. All right, so it seems to be okay. There's nothing coming out of there. So I just need to monitor it now for the next few drives and then just see if there's any issues. Okay, so I'll leave it there for now. Thanks for watching my videos.